talking and you can introduce it. Okay, I believe that we are now recording and live. Uh, my name is Dave Blum and I'm hosting or co-hosting uh, today's chat about uh, titled How to Create Unstoppable Trust in Your Teams at Work. It should be a great conversation. We've got a couple of uh, wonderful co-panelists and we're um, hoping for a, thir for a fourth uh, friend, Jim Clark in Hong Kong. If you can't make it, then we'll have an open seat and we can maybe have uh, some people jump in. Um, let's all introduce ourselves. I'll, I'll, we'll come back around to me, but uh, uh, down here, I'm going to point right down here is Jar Gerard Beaulieu. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Gerard? Sure. My name is Gerard Beaulieu. I work out of uh, Central British Columbia in Canada. Uh, the main thing I've been working on is the Virtual Icebreakers product. I What else? I've got four kids that are busy, so uh, thankfully they're not here this week or right now because you'd hear them in the background. <laughs> Probably so. Right. And right above Gerard. Weird, you're pointing the wrong way for me, but okay, I'm oh, yeah, really? oh, here I am. <laughs> Let's try that. <laughs> uh, yes, that, that one worked, that one worked. Cool. Uh, Kathy, Kathy Armias, uh, marketing strategist. Yes, Gerard's pointing up. Kathy Armias, marketing strategist. I wrote a book called The Unbreakable Rules of Marketing, Nine and a Half Ways to Get People to Love You. And I've also, I'm also the creator of a program called How to Rock a TED Talk. Excellent. I'm sure we'll hear more about all of this great projects as we go along. Uh, my name is Dave Blum. I'm the owner and founder of a company called Dr. Clue. We specialize in on-site and off-site team development or team alignment programs. Uh, we have uh, uh, fantastic fun things like treasure hunts. We do uh, bike building and other corporate social Excuse me, corporate social responsibility. I'm so choked up that I need to drink some water. <laughs> Just I'm a so moment so and I'll so come right back. Dave. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Gerard, hi. Hi <laughs> again. I did get choked up. Um, I I up. Good. That's I what happens. I was going to have to do a virtual like Heimlich or something. <laughs> that would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you're doing your elevator speech. Sometimes you. Uh, you get, you, get, you get caught between floors. So, uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> Dr. Clue at drclue.com is a company. We do team building, team development. We use treasure hunts and scavenger hunts and uh, bike building and corporate social responsibility and as a way of, as a springboard to exploring team development, team um, engagement, and uh, uh, team community and team trust. So that's what we do. And happy to tell you more about it offline. But here we are today to talk about unstoppable trust in your teams at work. And I think it, it wouldn't surprise me if this also expands out into uh, at home and in our private life. The, the topic is how do you build and how do you lose trust? And uh, we're going to open this up. We've got some people coming in, which is great. Um, would one of you like to uh, suggest one thing, not that builds trust, but one way that you can lose trust. Mm, yeah. What is the what is the fastest and easiest way that you can lose trust? Not being honest. Yeah. Not, not being, being open or honest. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lack of integrity. Any kind of lack of integrity. Not being honest. Not keeping your word in any way. I think is the quickest way to lose trust, and a huge chunk of it too. I mean, I think there's little things that make people go, oh, I don't know if I can trust you. This is a feeling. But I, I feel like if somebody doesn't keep their word in, in uh, any way, that that's the quickest way to lose a whole bunch of trust. Yeah. Respect can follow that pretty closely as well. If, if yeah. someone is being disrespectful, you can lose, like you lose respect for them. Uh, and along with that is the ability to trust them. Mm. Right. What do you think about... Uh, uh, in a similar vein, the uh, the idea of, of gossip. How does gossip play into that? Mm, that's a good one. It's funny because you know that saying, and I'm gonna I'm totally gonna mess this up. I know I am. But that saying that says when when Sally talks about John, it says more about Sally than it does about John, kind of thing. 
And so I definitely think that when you see somebody engaging in any kind of gossip, it definitely makes you feel like, ooh, I'm, I'm sure when I'm not around, that person's talking about me. So gossip, I think, is a huge way too. But I also yeah. like that saying that I've heard about, have you guys heard that saying where it says, you know, um, trust is like a, a perfect sheet of paper. Once it's been crumbled, it'll never be perfect again. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine was so much better. It's like chocolate before it's been melted and you can't get it back to <laughs> Like, mine's yeah, still be delicious. True. But I'd still eat it. That's the bad part, I guess. You know? <laughs> okay. You still eat the paper? I don't care. No, oh, not the, the paper. Chocolate. The chocolate. The chocolate. You know, I think that I think that uh, Sempo Sempo's Fitness has a great comment there. He says, "I think people who gossip to you will gossip about you." Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Though, no doubt. That's people's nature, and it. I, I, like I talked about respect before and when you gossip about someone you're not showing them respect if it, it, it you know what goes around comes around <clears throat> so yeah it's it, it's a deal breaker right yeah it's absolutely true i mean when you hear someone they think that they're creating a sense of intimacy with you by saying hey come over here i want to share some secret with you about so and so and it does create some intimacy, but you can't help in the back of your mind thinking, I wonder if they're saying this about me or yeah. when, when, the, when the shoe drops, when I get on their bad side, are they going to say this about me? So it doesn't, right. it builds, it builds some intimacy while you're having it, but there's a little uneasy feeling like, you know, I, 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 I don't think that this is going to uh, be a person that I, that I want to be associating with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, another one I think too is um, when somebody's. um when somebody's, um, you know, walk isn't in line with their talk, if they say, for instance, if they say that they, you know, believe in something, but then you hear them, you know, then you see them go against that, regardless of what it is. I mean, when they're just not being in line with themselves, I think it makes you kind of just distrust their personality a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd love to explore a little bit more because obviously on teams, you're not in that, you're not in that position where you really get to know people um, you, you only know people at a certain level. So I bet there's these little nuances that we actually pick up on as humans. And, and we, I really would love to discuss that a little bit more. What are those little nuances that people pick up on? And I think that's a big one when people, you know, if people, for instance, if people, you're telling everybody, oh, I eat super healthy. And then you're the first person grabbing the chocolate cake. I don't know. It's just, it's a little thing, but it makes you not really, you know, it's a little bit of a lack of trust there. So it is definitely uh something about uh, being consistent right yeah that, that your um your actions match your words right? right yeah and i think that sort of in line with that also is uh something about uh pretense right you know that when you hear people who are pretentious I mean, what does that mean to you uh the the, the title pretentious or adjective what does it mean to me either of you yeah Gerard, go ahead uh, um, no, you go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'd have to Google it to make sure I get the right definition. Of it. <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I can tell you what I think it means. Gerard, why don't you Google it and you tell me if I'm right? How's that? Okay. I, <laughs> it makes me worried about the Canadian education system. I know. I'm just, I'm just I saying. saying. <laughs> I know. Okay, no. fine. What I think <laughs> pretentious is, is that you. It's uh, you, Dave. <laughs> you're pretentious. You. I'm just joking. I'll give you some props. Okay, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> I feel better now. You know what? You know what? My I, I figured this out a while ago that when I, I I have no problems speaking about things, but if I'm not a hundred percent sure on the definition or about something, then I'll shut up because I don't want to look bad, especially on a blab. So that's why I'm kind of <laughs> like. Uh, I know what my yeah. definition so is. You're not I just pretentious. I love that. You're not yeah. a pretentious person. Yeah. Yeah, pretentious. And, and I think pretentious to me is just somebody that thinks that they're bigger than they are. You know, I mean, it usually is, is somebody yeah. that really wants to put their accomplishments out there or whatever it is. They, they think, they believe, and they're trying to prove that they have something over you. That's what I believe pretentious is. But I hopefully oh, Gerard could I've got to Google it probably, now, don't I? Probably way yeah. off. <laughs> we'll see how the Los Angeles um, education system works here in a minute, yeah. huh? Yeah. So, I certainly but, I, yeah, I certainly think that uh, 
if you are lying and you get caught in lying, like you said before, that's that's going to build, that's going to destroy trust really quickly. So you're, you're lying and you're gossiping. It goes out the window for sure. Okay. okay. So it's attempting to impress by affecting greater importance, talent, culture, et cetera, than that is actually possessed. So Bingo. You nailed, I nailed it. it. I nailed it. You nailed it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Awesome. I don't know. <laughs> what, what would it sound like? <laughs> I, I, I don't really uh, uh, cultivate pretentiousness, at least not intentionally. Um, well, of course, I do live I in a... And um, I live in Portland, Oregon, because Portland's amazing. I mean, yeah. I, how did I do? Did I do okay? Pretty good. I live in yeah. Northern California, surrounded by, uh, by vineyards. Mm, yeah, I'm in, the, I'm in the wine right. country, and I'm, pretty, uh, I'm doing pretty well, yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. What about you, Gerard? Give your best. Give your best shot at being pretentious. Be, being pretentious. I am the. I know everything about everything there, except maybe the word. Pretentious. <laughs> I was gonna say definitions. Except, yeah. Okay. <laughs> except I, the I definitions suck. I don't trust any of us at this point. I know. <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's wow! Out I, the I don't trust any of you. It's out the window. You know. I think. Uh, um, connected to this one is being transparent. And what, yeah. I mean, and what I mean by that is that if you're, uh, you know, if you're always holding your cards close to the vest, you know, like a poker player, uh, and people don't know how you're feeling, they don't have any sense of you, um, you're going to lose trust. That, that there's there's something about being open with how you're feeling like even even you'll, you'll have a situation sometimes where there's somebody who is absolutely abrupt and straightforward and 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 part of you feels like gosh that person it's hard to hard to like them but i trust them because i know that they're going to consistently be straight shooters right your yeah. cards are always out in the open right exactly yeah they're not hiding anything you know they're it's, it's anything. what you see is what you get and you might not like them but you will trust them that's kind of an interesting, I like that thought. That's a good distinction because I think many times we tie in when we can't trust somebody, we don't like them. But you've just brought something up that kind of blew my, did a little mind blow. It was just a tiny one, but it kind of blew my mind a little bit of like, okay. you could actually, you some. could actually tr not like somebody, but actually trust them. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Thank you for the prompt. Yeah, it's absolutely true. So how do we how do we rebuild trust if we lose it, especially in a team function? I love that we're talking about it in, as far as teams go. And yeah. Gerard, I know a lot of what you a lot of what you do is try to help build and facilitate that. You know, you're building that um, kind of connection and team. So how do we rebuild it if we've lost it? Like it's trust is a difficult thing to to regain. Whether you're it's a personal trust or whether it's a corporate trust, like a, a trust between yourself and a company or, or a team like it it's honestly this morning I had my little card and I thought there's <laughs> a lot of similarities to, to what you've written as to like when you're when you're consistent like if you're if you say you're going to do something and you do it that helps build trust um, obviously you know perception is reality when you get into perception you're talking about um, you know, if people perceive you to be not trustworthy, then they're not going to trust you. And, and so a lot of these rules, I, I really do think apply to it. Now, how do you gain it back? You almost have to go over and above to over and above what you'd normally do to gain it back. But it takes, it, it's a difficult thing. It's a slippery, well, it's a slippery slope. Once, once you've fallen off that trust wagon, good luck with it. <laughs> like, how do you, how do you gain it back? Like I, I honestly don't think that any type of, of team building exercise or, or uh, icebreaker or, or whatever could actually make it come back quicker than being as as you said, uh, uh, Dave, being transparent, being honest, and and really getting you know one on one with someone now. That, that's different when it's when you're talking about trust at the various levels, because it, I talked about personal trust. You know, do I trust you? That's one thing that's different than do I trust the team versus do I trust the, the company that I'm working for? And I, I think we're, we're probably talking more about trust in teams. Um, 
but they all have very similar um, trigger points for us. There's no doubt. We want to see consistency. We want to know that things are, there's no hidden agendas. So, What do you think, Kathy? How do you get trust back yeah. at work or at home? I, I agree with Gerard. It's, uh, once you've lost it, 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 you know, I think it's pretty noble if you have done something to kind of man up or woman up and, you know, suck it up and be patient. I think it takes time. Um, I think the first part, if you really know that you've lost trust, I mean, the first part is really being aware, right? You, you know you did something and you know people have lost trust in you. So go back and reconcile with the person, with the team, say, I'm really sorry, I flaked out, I dropped the ball, you know, I did this, I did, you know, whatever it is, I think you need to go back and, and really deal with that head on. That's, I think that's a, I think you get a lot of traction just from that. And then once you state that, um, you say, you know, moving forward, it's kind of like doing the apology the correct way. They say that giving an apology the correct way is not just saying, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. It's saying, I'm sorry. Um, this is why I'm sorry, meaning, you know, this is, I see how it affected you. And then this is what I'm going to do to make sure it doesn't happen anymore. And I think if you do that and you, and then you do stick with what you said you would do to not do that, you know, act anymore, regardless of whether it's you flaked or you, you know, you were dishonest about something. All you can do is time. It's yeah. kind of like being in prison, right? You got to put your time in and hopefully you got to put your time in. That's right. Early release. <laughs> Like, you good enough. If you look at one of the probably more interesting, or I shouldn't say interesting, it was actually, I think there's a lot of case studies around it, is the corporate apology of Tylenol. Um, I don't know if you, yeah. if you remember when they had those poisonings happening yeah. because people oh, were getting yeah. to their product. They, they could have, that was a sink or swim for me, I think, for the, pro, for the company. And they took it and they said, we'll fix it. And then they went just kind of bananas at, at re-engineering the, the, the containers and stuff. But with they gained back the trust within a very short time. And we're talking about something that people take as a medicine that was poison. Like how awful could that have went <laughs> if, if they didn't grab right. that and do the right thing? And they did the right thing. Now, whether I, like it, they, they gained the, the trust of the public back very quickly. That's a good point, Gerard, because they, I mean, they're now, I, I would say, in my mind, top of mind, when I think of Aspen, they've, they've been able to retain that, that brand they, trust. They that kept brand it. They oil. kept it. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good, it's a really good, it's a really good case study. You know, apologizing goes a long way. It's obviously, <laughs> we're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's what Mahmoud82 Polo is saying, is that it does take time. But I think also, if you... Again, this, this sort of uh, comes back to being transparent with your feelings and being vulnerable and also uh, uh, being uh, sincere. If you make a sincere apology, it goes a long way. And uh, it, it, in a way, it sort of lowers your status on, on a little bit. And you're basically saying, I'm no longer going to be pretentious and I know all the answers and I'm right and I'm never wrong and I'm the expert. But you actually show some humility and say, I made a mistake. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Well, that's, a, that's a good start. Now, it's not going to get you the trust back, especially if you said this again and again and again, like, yeah. you know, some sort of abusive. That's partner, a good point. You know, you know what? We, we you know, didn't think about that. You really only got one get out of jail free card. You do that. Exactly. Twice, you know, you know. You've got one shot. Like, was it Tylenol? Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting how this works by culture, right? Because, yeah. like, you, in some cultures, like usually in the U.S., for example, when a CEO is caught on something, they don't really admit it. They they'll fight it and deny it. Same yeah. thing with the political leaders. But, uh, for example, uh, in Japan, if someone is caught, a lot of times they will immediately resign. You know, the, the head of the head of the company will resign, and probably they'll have a knife out ready. You know, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I think I think an apology. Uh, Demonstrating some humility and vulnerability is a good start, but like you said, you got one shot at it. Yeah, yeah. totally agree. So beyond that, what you know, building. I love. I love how you type this, Dave. It's awesome. Like unstoppable trust. So there you we, go. Kind of, we kind of already covered like what, how you can quickly lose trust and how you can start to gain yeah. it. How do you get that unstoppable where 
you know, I when I when I, when you first said that, I was thinking about that whole trust game where you fall backwards and let somebody catch you. That's unstoppable mm. trust in my mind. And, yeah, uh, I, I used lot. to do that. I used to do that. I was leading ropes courses for a while. If you're familiar with those, you know, we were up in the trees and you're walking on a wire between trees at height. And uh, the first thing we always did was. Uh, you know, the trust fall because you had to, to trust that that person would belay you, you know, with the ropes and the pulleys and would actually be there for you. He wasn't just, you know, off flirting with his girlfriend, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> he had those ropes. Yeah. Phone going, oh my gosh, I was checking my phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that if you lose trust in all areas, then you're really in trouble, right? It's going to, you're going to have to make a sincere apology and then you're going to have to, to, to start Bye. being, yeah, you're going to, you're going to have to really jump in and, uh, and, and make up. But if it's only in one area, for example, you're losing trust because you're unreadable, you're Spock, you're, you know, nobody can see what your feelings are and you become aware of this, you can make an honest attempt, uh, to, to own up to it and try and, um, do something different in the future. It depends on, I think, how many different <laughs> areas where you've blown trust, right? Well, but in terms of how to, yeah, please. It, well, I was going to say, like, it depends on the level of trust too. Like, if someone is cold and and they're not, you know, the, the walls are up, that's a different level of trust than if I intentionally did something and knowingly did something to to um, abuse your trust. That's two different levels. Um, and I do agree that if if someone is aware that some of their behaviors may appear to be um, that the people may not trust them because of some of the behaviors, but they're, they're, it's not done intentionally. Um, yeah, for sure. They can, they can do things to turn it around. Um, I think it's, it's more difficult whenever it's, when there's a blatant mistrust that's happened. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And that's about, that's kind of what you're talking about, Dave, is these different areas too. I mean, you, you probably, you got, I mean, you know, Gerard just kind of put a wall up, distinguishing the two there's something that's intentional and there's something that's kind of unintentional so, right right and, and they hold different weights uh, this is a good point you know you there's something you don't think about when you're when you're working with other people you know the unintentional piece of how you might come across you know is is something to really think about when you're when you're interacting with people that have a different personality trait than you i bet yes. you dave when you Very were talking much. about the person that blurts stuff out i'm like oh my gosh that's me that's totally me. People probably hate me, but they know that they can trust me. You know, you're, you're going to be consistently straightforward. I'm going to be consistently blunt, or yeah. So this is this is an interesting point. This idea about intention, right? Because when you are in the victim mode, right, you feel that other people are the villain, right? Mm, yeah. And the villain in your mind has is intentionally trying to do you wrong, right? right? And, and, and so that you're ascribing intention to them. Now, the villain, however, in their, whoever they are, they're not actually, they probably don't feel that they have any negative intention at all. If anything, they see themselves um, as the hero mm -hmm. or, or the victim. And there actually are these three <laughs> archetypes, right? You've got the hero, the victim, and the villain. And the hero, uh, goes to bat for the villain, excuse me, for the victim, and says, "Okay, I, you know, I will go and and champion you because." The, and, and the victim uh, says, "Thank you because I need someone to champion me because a villain is trying to do me wrong." And meanwhile, the villain is saying, "Wait a second, I'm the victim here, or I'm the hero. I'm trying to save the world, right?" And so uh, you, you've got this incredible sort of thing. What happens then is that the hero. At a certain point, crosses the line, gets a little bit too violent and a little bit too aggressive, and maybe uh, does something immoral in terms of, you know, acting like the hero and bringing the villain. Out. And all of a sudden, uh, you see this in stories: they become the villain, the villain. because they've yeah. crossed the line. They become too assertive and too aggressive. And then, the, the you know, a lot of times the victim will, uh, the villain will then become the vic the victim, and it goes in this. In it's what's called the drama triangle. And the track yeah. the the question is, how do you get out of that? But it always comes down to ascribing negative intention on the other person. So if you can actually say to something, "I'm sorry that my actions resulted in something that uh, that did not work for you, then did not serve you. My intentions were good." But the, the but the result, uh, you know, really was not what I expected. Mm, yeah. Yeah. This is a uh, this drama triangle. I'll write this down here. It comes from a guy yeah. named Gary. No, I'm Gary. really familiar with it. I'm glad you brought it up. Gary Harper. Before, 
Pardon me? Yeah. But I haven't heard from before. Before triangle. Yeah. He's got a great book. It's called, um, what is it called? It's something like the, the, um, the, the gift, like the, the, the joys of conflict resolution. That's what it's called. Well, there's another, there's another really good book that I think um, plays into what you're talking about. It's a, a very, um, it's another kind of social behavior approach. And the book is called Give and Take. Have you guys heard of it? It's by Adam. Yeah. Ooh, I forgot his name. I can look it up really quick after I'm done talking. But, um, and it talks about that there's givers, that there's takers, and there's matchers. And so the givers are people that just want, they just give and they don't expect anything back. The takers, of course, they want to get more than they, you know, that they want to get more than they're actually giving. And then the people that are matchers are just kind of like even Steven. They're just like, you know, I'll give, but I expect to get back even what I put out. Mm. And you can actually, in your life, in different areas, you can move. You're not just one type all the time. You could be a giver in one area and a taker in another area. Right. And the interesting piece about it, though, is they found that givers are on the very top of the success, you know, kind of, you know, ladder, if you will, and they're on the very bottom. And the only distinction between the givers that were on the top and the givers that were on the bottom is if the, give, the givers on the top were more other centric, if you will, and the givers on the bottom were self sacrificing. So yeah. they allowed, they were a little bit too much of a doormat. They allowed, they sacrificed themselves for others as opposed to just having that mindset of, of being other centric, if you will. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, yeah, I'm interested in hearing that um, who the author is for that because that yeah, that no, is really interesting. Really it's a yeah, good book, really good book. Adam, well, it up. well, there's an incredible yo-yo uh, uh, effect when you're uh, in the giver mode if you're not careful. And when you're in the giver mode and you give and it's appreciated, that's great. If it's not appreciated, you you can quickly tumble down into uh, feeling resentment towards other people for not appreciating you, for not appreciating yeah. all the great things that you've contributed and given to the world. And, uh, and so you have to be yeah. careful if you're, I'm just a giver, I'm a giver, poor me, I'm just a giver. I think, uh, you know, ideally what you're, you're aiming for is uh, to have something a little bit more equitable, kind of uh, um, uh, looking for win-win situations, you know? Well, yeah, if, so it was, it was if, Adam Grant. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm just saying it was Adam Grant. I posted it there, but oh, the, okay. But it's an interesting thing that you mentioned before, though, Kathy. That if you're a matcher, you're a give, you can be a giver, but you expect something. If I'm a giver and I expect to be appreciated, I'm almost matching, and that's an, I've never thought of it that way because, um, yeah, let's say that it's happened to me before where I felt like that, where I felt like I was giving and giving, and and it's like really and to a certain extent you're um you're, you're doing you're in a match thing because you're like okay i'm doing something for you where i know that there's people that they give and they just don't care whether they get anything in return hats often yeah. they're like amazing people um i'm right. not that i'm i'm i'll admit that i'm not as good as that um i'm, I'm probably more giving in business than i am personally, which sounds mm. awful. Um, <laughs> but I, I can see that I can see how I when I give I, ex I expect, like, even if it's just an appreciation, I do expect something there. So well, yeah, we could, this, put, we, could I, I've learned something. we could put your kids on and find out how much you've been giving. Them. <laughs> Let's see how much of a giver you I have. honestly don't give them much, to be honest with you. I, I give them experiences. I, I give them my time and I give them experiences, but they appre they 100% appreciate it and they know it. And uh, I have a fantastic relationship with my children. I love that, though. And I don't think you should feel – I love that, Gerard. And I love your your open honesty and you know being, being vulnerable and saying that. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I, I think it's a high expectation thing in your personal life. You're like, okay, I'm picky and choosy who I'm around, who I work with, who I, I mean, I'm that way with my clients. So I get it. I don't, I don't just need money. I want to work with people I enjoy working with. So you're kind of, I feel like that's what you're saying in your personal life is I'm going to give, I'll give a ton, but I'm not just going to yeah. give for no reason. 
Yeah, so that's true. Like that. That's true. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see it as bad. It's kind of interesting. Now, just to get meta for a second here, what you guys are doing is demonstrating uh, trustworthy qualities, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that that there's some real um, uh, transparency, some vulnerability, some honesty, some opening up makes me want to trust the two of you more than if you were just saying, oh, I've got it all wired. I'm, I have a perfect life with perfect friends and perfect kids and every, and, you know, uh, you know, you are, you're demonstrating, uh, you're walking the talk here. Yeah. We didn't even know we were doing that, huh, Gerard? <laughs> I did. Yeah. I and no uh, our, no, I already know that I'm a trustworthy person, so I don't need to, I don't need you two to like validate me. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, love these, that. I, I agree. Here, I'm a trustworthy here, person. Here, I'm validating you. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you just figured it out, Dave, but I already knew I was trustworthy. So you can. Yeah, trust yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I think that there are a couple other things we haven't talked about, if I may. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, one of the things has to do with, uh, with, with um, being responsive. So mm. what I mean by that is, again, if you're in business and you have a manager, yeah, and you've got a manager, and manager never gives you feedback. They don't give you a performance review. They don't tell you uh, anything about what you're doing. They just release you and say, go do your thing. And they say, I trust you. But there's, there's a, a, an absence in trust when you're not getting um, feedback from people, honest and conscien conscien conscientious feedback, right? And I think that that's really important for, for leaders, you know, is to, is to give feedback consistently Again, and, and so that they know where you're coming from and that it's not a guesswork, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think so, about that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right on your heels on that one, Dave. And that's where we get into intention, intentional trust, uh, breaking of trust, and unintentional breaking of trust. What you're talking about is an unintentional breaking of trust uh, and, and, or damaging of trust, if you will. And that's where team building or, or other exercises can help build that because if I don't know that you are, are that, that I'm, I'm lacking at giving you feedback then I don't know that I'm doing something wrong where if you have an exercise to show people that look this exercise will show how trust is beneficial for a team and that my perception of trust is different than other people's percep perception of trust and how they feel engaged is that fair right yeah, mm -hmm. totally. No, and I think that, it, and I think that it, at the same time, it, in that work environment, you want to be able to feel that you can bring your opinion, right? The environment is such that you can bring your opinion, your thoughts, even your anger and frustration. You can bring it into a meeting, and it's going to be treated with honor and respect. It's it you know you if you make a mistake you're not going to be kicked out you're not going to receive abusive behavior but that honor and respect is being handed out even when people are are being being truthful right so it's it's a it's a, it's a, a willingness to give feedback and also to offer your feedback you know that that sort of environment so that you can have constructive arguments and you know that there's not going to be fallout afterwards mm. that's tricky yeah. yeah. If you thought that, oh my God, if I say my opinion, you know, the politics are going to get me and I'm going to be out of here. You know, if you're always worried about everything I say feeds into the office politics, you're not going to have a trusting environment. You're going to have looking over your shoulder and you're going to have a lot of stress as well, which, as we know, it's going to make you sick, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to have a lot of conformity. You're going to have a lot of people just conforming to what they believe that they're supposed to be saying and doing and how they're supposed to be acting. And it's many times, I think, why in, cor in corporate cultures, <laughs> you hear people like they'll talk the same, they use the same language. It becomes this kind of, it seems weird. It's like a click or it seems like a cult <laughs> sometimes. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like yeah. You go to certain kind of companies and, and you have that. And I think you're right. It becomes this, and it's this, it's not really a consistency. It becomes like more of a conformity. As you two were talking about that, I was thinking that's, it's just conforming to what you believe is, and it's a survival tactic. If you think you're going to lose your job because, you know, you're the outcast or you're the outlier, you're not. You're not as willing to to you know state your opinion if it doesn't go with the flow. Right. 
So you have to feel like if you make a mistake, you're not out on your heels. If right. you say what, if you say, if you express an opinion, you're not out on your heels. You're not, or, or you're not going to be shut down um, and seen as pushy. But that, you know, uh, that there's 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 honor and respect uh, going on uh, no matter what what uh, people are saying. That's the environment that's going to build trust. And if, yeah. if if everybody is worried about every thing they say and and how they say it, it's going to be a distrusting environment. I think. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah. No, I mean you can disagree with me. I mean. Uh, you know, but, I, but we agree. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that we're creating an environment of trust. So <laughs> and I will treat you with honor and respect. <laughs> so you're saying that we shouldn't be afraid to disagree with you. Absolutely good. not. We're good, because good. it could happen. And we and we do trust you. I think that's really cool. Um, and yeah. it's funny, Dave, because sometimes I think, um, I think sometimes it's a it's a tricky situation. You might have a team situation where you're trying to meet a team goal. But, uh, you know, like Gerard's pointing out, there's these, there's these different levels of trust. And you may trust somebody on the team level, but not trust them personally. So I feel like you get this overall score, if you will. You know what I mean? And it affects everything. If I can't trust you on the personal level, even if I know you're a good worker mm -hmm. or you're good for the team or you're very driven or you bring some great talent, I think your overall score is what really affects you. Does that make sense? I'm kind of yeah. hearing this as an overall score and saying, I agree. So I, it's kind of interesting. You guys have brought up so many facets of trust that I never thought about today. You know, I never thought about the whole intentional, unintentional. I mean, there's so many facets there that it's really, really starting to get me to think more about how we trust people. And it doesn't become such an unknown science anymore. Yeah. You know, and one of the things I know that you care passionately about, Kathy, is 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 showing love right yeah yeah absolutely and trust is uh reliant on uh people demonstrating caring in other yeah. people right yeah so if you if you're letting people know that you hear them you understand them uh you have compassion you care about their outside life all of those things also uh, are really vital. And I think this is a, you know, I think this one actually can, can trump all the other ones and can also restore trust when it's lost. Is when, yeah. you, when you really turn around and say, okay, I've been this cold ogre and I am changing my ways. And you say, and, and then you really, you make a point day in and day out of asking people, how is it going for you? What is going on? You remember the details of their outside life. Um, I think that that's, it, you, you, you share compassion, all the things you know that, that we call emotional intelligence, they really, really go a long way. Of course, you have to be consistent about it and you can, and you have to be real about it. If people are think that you're acting like a yeah. survivor, then you're, you're, you know, forget it. But I think caring should be a part of the equation as well. Yeah, I agree. This, if, if you don't have the sincerity, um, th that can, you can read through that pretty quickly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an amazing thing when you're talking about that drama triangle. When you switch to this mode, it's very disarming. It's one of the things about they, they teach in conflict resolution is when someone is raving, blah, 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 blah. And they, they're expecting you to be the ogre and the villain and to, and to come back at them. And you say, and you actually listen and say, I hear what you're saying. Tell me yeah. more. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you've, you've got a disconnect. All of a sudden, they're expecting you to have negative intentions and non-caring. And then you flip it around and start saying, actually... I'm listening here. It's like, oh my goodness, maybe this visit person isn't the villain I thought they were. So it's it's it uh, it gets in and, and it it creates an interference pattern with your perception. And uh, I think it's really important that that willingness to, that that heartfelt feeling of I care about your welfare and I'm not making this up. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. The same exact thing applies to when you're um, when you're doing any sort of negotiation, whether it's in you know external negotiation or internal, if it's something within the team, or when you're doing any kind of negotiating. If you if you show the other person that you're negotiating with that you care, and you ask more questions and you become more open with the outcome, um, people are more likely to try to meet you in the middle. It's only when you make it a standoffish kind of thing where you're like, I need to get my, I need to get what I need. And so then it becomes this fight for who's going to, you know, who's going to have the last card, who's going to be the last man. Yeah, who's going to back down. 
Yeah, yeah I'm not exactly. backing down. You're going to have to back down, and then nothing happens. Then, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so I, I always I like to think of the, the the TV show Columbo. Do you guys remember that? I do remember that show. Did you ever see that one, Gerard? No. Well, I I've heard of it, but I never did watch it at all. There was this uh, detective uh, named Columbo, played by Peter Falk, and he always wore a trench coat, and he had this shambling, ambling sort of manner. You know, I mean, we could probably do an impression of him, but uh, inevitably, what he's like. Well, you know, I just don't understand. Maybe you could clear this up for me. And what he was doing was humble inquiry, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> you know, and he was very disarming that way. You trusted him implicitly because he's not coming in with with guns blaring. He's like, maybe I don't quite understand yeah, this, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. But he's but, also but saying, I'm, I want to understand. He's very it. stupid, too. He came across yes. as this bumbling idiot, and he, and he kind of felt sorry for him. And it's like you almost gave him all the answers because you're like, dude, you can't even figure it out. Yeah, it, it is a different but, approach. But how often is our perception of what I think you want or I think what you're saying different than what you're actually saying? And by oh, yeah. doing that, by saying, okay, what is it that you want? By getting someone to explain it over and over again, which is slightly off topic a bit, but there's a lot to that. You could be down a path, whether it's whatever your perception is, could be much different than what's actually being presented or being being well, being presented by, by the individual that you're talking to. And whether that's negotiations or whatever, um, getting people to reinforce what they're saying is something I don't do enough of. I wish I did more of it because if you say something and I think you're being um, like it, it's something as, as a negative thing towards me or, or about me or about something that I have, I'm more apt to like shut down and, and just assume something as opposed to really trying to find out what it is that you're trying to say. Because I may be wrong and I know that I've been wrong before and that's mm -hmm. cost me. Uh, well, loss of trust because I've I've jumped to that conclusion when I shouldn't have. Mm. So uh, you know, obviously, you want to you want to be uh, using phrases like uh, "let me let me be sure I, I understand this." Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Very true. Right. Yeah. Let me uh, uh you know let, let me just uh, ch uh, check in. Let me paraphrase paraphrase what I heard you say. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's, that goes a long way, too. And it shows that you care about what they say enough that you want to be crystal clear about it, right? And right. that you were listening enough to actually listening. even come up with your own version, even if it's not 100% yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I have a – let's see. So what, what I've got here uh, in my mind is – oh, it's it, you want to hear it? It's, it's a mnemonic, okay, for mm. trust, okay? So the T in, trans, in trust is for transparent. Okay, mm -hmm. the R in trust is responsive. The U is, it? yeah. I, I'm not writing it down. You want one of you want to, guys want to write it down? I think he okay. is. I am. Okay. Trust, uh, transparent, responsive. R is responsive. Uh huh. The U is for use caring. That's the best I can do in this. Use <laughs> caring. Use caring. Use caring. Okay. Care. Yeah. Use care or use caring. Mm -hmm. The S is. Be sincere, so sincere. Sincerity. Yeah, and so there's one more. Okay, there's one final T. Uh -huh. Any guess? On, any guess on what it is? Maybe Matt Sherman can do it. <laughs> Come on, Matt. Uh, no. What is it? Transparent, responsive, use care, be sincere. Caring, sincere. There's one more really it's important. Be an action thing, I, I, and I'm missing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. What Gerard, you got a guess? I don't know. Okay, here it is. Truth. Truth is is up there with sincere, yeah. It's be trustworthy. Okay, so be order, trustworthy. So in order what, to gain trust, you got to be trustworthy. What trustworthy means is that you do what you say you're going to do. You fulfill your agreements and your obligations, mm -hmm. right? So you only make agreements that you intend to keep, if you're not going to be able to do it, you give early notice that you're not going to be able to do it. If you have any 
broken agreements, you clean them up as they're happening. But the important thing is that you're trustworthy. You're worthy of trust. You do what you say you're going to do again and again and again and again. So it's really action oriented. It's not as much about your stance or feeling towards people, but it's it's in terms of you do the actions you say you're going to do and you, know, you, you meet your obligations. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. It's great. There it is. We there got it our, is. We, we got, got an our, acronym for trust. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you guys want to try a game? Yeah, let's do a game, of course. Okay. I have a book open here. This is, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. This is, uh, it's backwards, but it's The Five uh, Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Yeah. So he, we, can, we can read it properly. Yeah, yeah, we can read it right when you put it up. <laughs> oh, can you? It looks yeah, backwards. Yeah, it looks backwards. Yeah, that's why you're over there when I think you're over there. That's yeah, exactly. What... You were pointing. It's like I'm, you're here and Gerard's there for me. How about that? Looks all backwards to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a statement, and you can tell me if it uh, is uh, is trust or non-trust. Okay. Okay. Trust T or, or no, T or non-NT. <clears throat> and for our followers like Tim Gillette who just joined, you can put you can write in and guess T or non-T. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, asking for help. Trust or non-trust. Okay. Oh, am I supposed to type it in? I don't know. We could do it that way. Yeah, t trust, trust, trust. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. I I'm sorry. I was playing Family Feud. I was like, my hand was ready. I'm like, eh. that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Okay. So asking for help. Yeah, that's a that's a trust behavior. Um, holding grudges. Ah, uh, eh, non trust. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I like it. I, I think. I think. I, I think that uh, Gerard got in on that one. Okay. Um, let's see. Cheating. He had his finger on the end. He knew that one was coming up. Concealing. Getting, if he grabs his nose, then I know that he's going to be know saying it's gonna be, yeah. there, there, We've got a little game going on. There's a take. Okay. Conceal your weaknesses and mistakes from another. Oh, gosh. Not trust. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're not playing. Come on. Take risks in offering feedback and assistance. Oh, I put R. What is R? <laughs> <laughs> R. That was responsive. I, I was like, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. D Dave, what was that? I take, <laughs> take, I didn't see the R. Take risks in offering feedback and assistance. That's trust, yeah. Yeah. It's because I put R and then I deleted it really quick. And I put That's e. cool. Waste time and energy managing uh, people's behaviors for effect. Energy, yeah. yeah. Look forward to meetings and other opportunities to work as a group. Trust. Yeah, that's a trust. trusting team. Um, hesitate to ask for help or provide constructive feedback. Not trust. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Dread meetings and find reasons Not to trust. avoid spending time together. Yeah. Not trust. You know what's really funny? You can actually yeah. tell where it's going just by the first word. Yeah. Dread, <laughs> fail, uh, jump to conclusions. Yeah, exactly. You, can, you don't even have to say the rest. You can just start saying it. <clears throat> Can I, uh, let, me, let me share for you, if I can, uh, a really untrusting situation I had on one of my programs. I was doing a treasure hunt in New Orleans, and uh, the group met at a bar beforehand, uh, the night before, to, to get to know each other and to get to know me. <clears throat> so we go out there, and, and everybody's having a good time, but there's one guy who's sitting there, and he says, uh, actually, no, he didn't even come is what happened. He didn't even attend. And so when I saw him the next day, I said, hey, we didn't see you last night, and he said, well, I, uh, I don't really like, feel very respected in this group. We used to be a, uh, more of an entrepreneurial, uh, flat uh, structure. Uh, we were bought out, and now it's a hierarchical. And I don't feel like the company cares about me at all. I'm just a number, and I'm just a, a, a cog in the machine. As a result, I don't give any more than is required. My free time is my own. I don't go to social meetings. I don't go to uh, that type of thing because that is not, uh, you know, it, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to show up when I have to, but I'm not going to offer it on my free time. And then at a certain point during the activity, I said, well, I'd like to take a uh, photograph. We've got a, he says, no, no, I don't allow anyone to take photographs. I'm not playing. Wow. Yeah, he, he wouldn't show up to the meeting. He was giving minimal, minimal effort and results. He wouldn't even allow himself to be photographed. 
it's this passive aggressive too. It was highly passive aggressive, and it's on him, obviously, but it's also on the organization to let things get to a place where they're not even aware that this guy is checked out. Right? Wow. This it's guy, like the guy it, lurking yeah. in the background that you don't even know is like plotting the demise of your company. That's yeah, it's, it's like what we talked about last week about uh, um, active disengagement. Yeah, right? exactly. Or at least engage, disengagement to the point where he's, you know, he's just giving, you know, 1%, right? Yeah. Just wait, waiting for retirement. You, you want to hear, you want to hear a, a, a story where I lost trust with a huge client and it's, it, it was a, it was a Gerard, it was an unintentional thing. Um, I ended up giving this presentation at a, a I'm not going to say any names here. Um, not that they did anything wrong. It was all me, but I gave a lar I gave a presentation at a large, really famous ad agency in New York. And the guy that brought me in is one of the senior VPs and he loved my presentation. So he he contacted the, the head of training and development and he said, hey, well, let's have this person we want. We, let's have her do our trainings because they do like an internal training like once a year. They have people fly from all over the world. And my bad. Number one, I thought I was kind of in, you know. So in my mind, when I had this conversation with this lady on the phone, I was just thinking that we were just going to talk logistics and it was just going to be like, whatever. So we get on the phone and she immediately goes right price and says, well, what's your price? So I tell her and, you know, then we start talking about a bunch of other things. And then she never, ever, ever <clears throat> returns an email, a call, anything from me ever again. And what I realized, huge mistake, lost a huge client over it was that I lost her trust because I didn't care enough even though I thought I had already proved myself to the organization, I didn't prove my trust level with her to care about what she needed. I didn't even ask her. She asked me what the price was. I gave it to her. And th does that make sense? It was so unintentional. And then when I went back to that VP and said, what's the deal? He's like, eh, sorry, she doesn't trust you for whatever reason. Something happened. Right. You know? It's, it's very tricky. It's very tricky because, uh, there's like these general rules, right? We talked about the TRUST, but it also comes down to people, their upbringing, all the experiences that have happened to them in their life. And, and, you, and you're not, you know, they're, they're showing you only the tip of the iceberg on their entire, you know, internal landscape. And, and yet you're somehow supposed to imagine, uh, you know, what will be, uh, trigger their trust, you know, their, their trust button. It's pretty it's, tricky. Yeah, I mean, it's all about you perception. You gotta go in with a little bit of, yeah, common sense. Yeah. Sometimes I think that the golden rule, you know, about do unto others as they, you know, you'd have them do unto you. I don't actually think it's accurate. I think it should be do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? That is very true, actually. Humble um, inquiry. How would you yes. like to, uh, to me how to exhibit you, trust? How do you want to be loved? How do you want to be yes. loved? Yes. Exactly. What's your love bucket, right? It's true. You're, you're right about that. What's your, what's your love language? I guess. Yeah, I, what's your love language? Yeah. It's, like how do you want to be loved laugh how do you how can i make you trust me like how do you what do you feel trusted like when do you feel the most trust that it, it totally makes sense gerard i feel like you there's a trust story in there from you somehow Personal, trust. Professional. i've got a silly one for you that's it's okay, hilarious yeah, we'll it's, a, yeah. it's a corporate one you have to hear it okay. okay so and it wasn't actually in a company that i was in i just heard about it from a facilitation company so <laughs> There was this uh, weekly meeting that, or weekly or day, I think it was a weekly meeting that they would have in this organization. And <clears throat> what would happen is that everybody would get into the meeting and they had donuts. And there, they didn't have a lot of donuts. They had pretty much enough for one for everyone. Well, people would show up late and they wouldn't get a donut. Oh. So they got pissed off because they didn't get donuts. So the plan was that in order to get your donut, you had to go see the secretary before the meeting to get your donut coupon so that you make sure that everybody had a donut. And you could only get a donut if you had a donut coupon. And so she was tallying who had what coupons in order to stop someone eating two donuts. Now, mm. what kind of culture does that, like that is just, 
mind-bogglingly, mind-bogging, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's just unbelievable yeah, that, that, that they would get to that point. It just sounds ludicrous over a donut. No two donuts for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you can just imagine the dysfunction in the rest of the organization if that's if that was an issue. Well, that's how yeah. it works, isn't it, right? When, when people, when trust is broken, uh, when you have trust, you don't need to tally everything. You don't need to count everything. You don't have to rely right. on strict personal metrics. But when it's broken, that's when people say, "Okay, fine. Then you just need to pay me more." As a you know, yeah. Yeah. that's you, you, know, you work to rule. You work to rule. It becomes just like the guy said. I'm you know I'm out at four or five, whatever. I'm done. You can't bug me after after that time. And that's where you get into work to rule. People just don't. It, it, they they make a definitive line between personal life and, and work life. And I think it's a sad way to live. Well, I shouldn't say sad way to live. I think it's an unfortunate way to live because if you love your work, it's like, well, if I happen to be doing it now, or if I happen to be doing it later tonight, it doesn't matter. I love it. Um, and if you have that, which I feel I do now, um, I think that's a that's a great thing for for anyone to have is like to have that kind of passion or that kind of uh, willingness to to work anytime. Not everybody has that. Yeah. If you create an environment, let me ask you this, guys. If you had an environment at work where people are transparent and uh, and and vulnerable, they're responsive and they give feedback and they also ask for feedback in, a, in an environment where they feel like it's going to be handled courteously and, and with respect. And there's caring about each other and, and seeing people as real people and not just as uh, people who can do jobs. And people are sincere. There's no lying. There's no gossiping. There's truth. And people are trustworthy. When you've got an environment like that, what is uh, what do you think is possible? What do you think is possible in that environment? What 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 how what are uh, how are people going to show up at work in, in an environment like that? Oh my gosh, I, I've been in an environment like that. Um, one of the past jobs that I I, I was at, and I, and I what remember. Was it like? I remember too because Gerard kind of touched on this a little bit. I remember when I first showed up to this company. Um, some of the people there were jaded, <laughs> and some of the people weren't. So people had different perceptions different realities and different perceptions of the same reality. So I show up and I'm like, wow, oh my gosh, there's all these, what is going on down there? I was wondering if you had noticed. <laughs> <laughs> if, you had any doubt that, if you had any doubt that Gerard is in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Is, exactly. is there something wrong with the picture? Is it snowy or what? It's like watch, watch this, your, Kathy. No, I'm, wa I'm wiping the snow off my off the picture frame there. I think it'll work. There it goes. Uh, you are. You're wiping it off. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Where are you getting snow I, from, Gerard? Um, you know when I said want to bling the blap? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, that's not a very good thing. But I just wanted to show what was going to happen next week. Now Dave has already I'm, seen it, so now you're... I'm here trying to have some like serious thing, and then Dave starts laughing, and I'm like, "Why is he laughing? I'm being serious." I'm, I'm looking sorry. at him, and it's snowing in Canada. I'm, I'm very sorry for that. I just uh, oh, I, it was kind of an advertisement for next week, but yeah. there's nobody watching anyway. So and it, you know that was really funny, but my laughter was was uh, perceived as uncaring. I saw that. I blew trust yeah, for a second there. No, you didn't. I, I at first I was just like, "It's a disconnect. Why is he laughing? It's not mm. funny." This is not funny. And then and then it caused me to be aware. I'm like, what's going on? I looked around and I saw snow down there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Uh, anyway, all I was saying was in that scenario, I came into this team and I thought it was amazing. Some people didn't, but um, it was just their perception of being, being jaded. But what I had seen was a, a corporation that had given, um, had created this culture of, awesome open amazing you know resources and and it was good and and we did some amazing things it's it was the shredding company that i created that you know multi-million dollar ad campaign for and i just you know the campaign that i created really was about all that i saw and just kind of pulled it out of there it, you know you, you've got this environment where i go to the ceo and i'm like let's do something crazy like 
pay $25,000 for a little flash player to put videos up on the internet. I mean, who does that? You know, who, who facilitates that kind of craziness, you know? Yeah. That's a, a pretty exciting thing when people are, they can't wait to get to the office. They don't want to miss a meeting. They don't want to miss anything. They will go the extra mile. They will work late and not ask for overtime. It's you not see this about money. Yeah, exactly. It's not this. about yeah, money. It's not about money. Yeah. yeah. It's not about money. It's about, it's not, and it's not even just about we're in a loving, caring environment. You're also in an environment which is exciting, where things are getting done and, and uh, it's bristling with electricity. People want to be around that. And uh, it's something that, you know, we, we do the T-R-U-S-T and you, and you can get there. Yeah. I think we should add a Y to it and be like, I'm trusty. <laughs> what would the Y stand for? Trusty. I can't think of like uh, trustworthy not, you is what it should be. The trustworthy you, or <laughs> trustworthy or young at heart, or something. Yeah. Something. Cool. Wow. What a, what a good discussion. Thank you, everyone. No, it's awesome. Yeah, that was. Uh, I it just like what Kathy was saying too. I, I've learned something from this. Just a bit more insight into just kind of taking apart some of the of the components of this was was interesting. It helps understand how to how to think of this in a different way. Yeah. And uh, again, you know, we I trusted you guys that you would show up here on time and ready to go. You know, so you did what you said you were going to do. Um, I trusted that you guys would be uh, sincere, that I knew that you guys were going to be vulnerable today because you always are. And uh, and, you know, I'm, I trust that afterwards you'll give me honest feedback about how things went today and uh, and uh, with, in a caring way. So, you know, that's why we're doing this. Uh, we try and walk the talk. Yep. Excellent. All right. We're at uh, the end of our session. And, and uh, we just want to each of us add some closing thoughts on the topic of unstoppable trust in your teams at work. Um, Kathy, what would be your closing thought? Well, I, I would... I think one of the things I learned today that I think was pretty cool is um, think about think about the two types of trust, the, the um, intentional and unintentional. So think about um, your actions as a whole, that there might be things that you're doing unintentionally that might be causing people to mistrust you. Um, and, and of course, definitely think about the things that you're intentionally doing. If you're intentionally doing things, um, be willing to be open, sincere, honest, apologize and rectify. So that would Perfect. be my closing thought there. How about you, Gerard? You know, there's not a lot that I can add to what Kathy just just said. If the, if there was one thing that I will be more aware of, or or at least think about differently now, it's the trust, the unintentional trust that I may maybe breaking in my relationships, whether it's work, personal, whatever, um, that I know that happens. Like I, I'm, I'm relatively aware that some of it happens, but if you're once you're aware of something. Right, Kathy, when you're in Toastmasters and you're aware of your crutch words, you know how to how to behave with them. You know that rather than doing this behavior, I do that behavior and you should have better outcome. So that's my take on this. Perfect. I think uh, you're absolutely right about intention. And I think uh, one of the things I got out of it today was to always check in with the other person to make sure that they are hearing you the way that you intended to be heard. Yep. Right. And if they're not, find out how they want <laughs> what they want you to say. But, you know, take that come from that perspective of of humble inquiry and you're going to do better and you're going to get a lot less uh, misunderstanding. Yeah. Terrific. Agreed. Well, we will be back. Uh, Gerard, what is uh, well, we can talk about this later, but uh, um, the next one I wanted to do, I want yeah, how, to, you go. how to bl right. bling your blab. So we'll do that next time. Oh, we're paused how to bling your blab. So that'll be the next talk. I just don't know when it's going to be. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Right on. Um, I'm Dave Blum and my company again is called Dr. Clue. I'll write it down. And we are, it's actually the, the longer title is Dr. Clue Treasure Hunts, www.drclue.com based out of California, but operating all over the world. Gerard, your company. My company is uh, Virtual Icebreakers, www.virtualicebreakers.com. And we're here to help your, build your remote team trust by offering various icebreakers and some 
more advanced activities. So come to the website and check it out. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. And mine, I'm uh, Kathy Armias, www.kathyarmias.com, marketing strategist and um, head coach. So uh, you want to find out how to give a better TED Talk or be better at marketing? Check me out. Absolutely. Great. Thank you very much, everyone.